So for the same preference relation, uh, I'm defining a choice behavior. So for this choice behavior, how do I define it? I say, give me any non-empty subset of R plus square, all right? Um, I want it to be non-empty because as I said, if it is empty, there's nothing to choose. So for any such non-empty set, uh, what is going to be the bundle that I'm gonna pick? Well, pick the bundle x, y, obviously it's in A, right? So pick the bundle x, y, where x, y is at least as good as every other alternative, every other bundle in this set, okay? So that's, that's the uh, choice behavior, all right? So look in a set, and within this set, always choose the bundle all right, that is at least as good as every other bundle. Right? Question is, well, obviously, um, is this choice function, is this choice function or correspondence? Is this a choice function or a choice correspondence? What does that mean? If you remember the math review, function means uh, you know, from set A to, you know, A, I am mapping, uh, I'm sorry, from set A to, let's give it a different name because I, the A is going to be the same. So let's say I have two set Y and Z. So a, a, a function basically means for every, you know, a, a element in my domain, I'm going to map it to one element on my range. I may have, you know, a bunch of different elements on my uh, range, but I have to map all the elements in my domain, all of them, into one and only one alternative or element in my range, which is Z. So this is what function is. Correspondence, however, maps all of those, all of the elements in the uh, domain, uh, but the thing is, the, 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 um, it doesn't have to be uh, only one element here. You may, for example, map this guy into this one, but also map it here. All right. So maybe basically you map it to two numbers or two elements in the range. Or you may map this to everything in the sets in the, in the range. All right. So you, some of you may say, hey, hey, I mean, this is not therefore a function. Yes, it is not a function. It is what we call a correspondence. It is still, by the way, a valid mathematical object. All right. So we call them correspondence, meaning, meaning if this choice function, uh, I'm sorry, if this choice rule, let's call it, is a function, then for every A, C of A must be a unique, meaning there's only one element in it. But if it is a correspondence, that means for some A's, there are more than one alternatives in C of A. Maybe two, maybe three, I don't know, but for some A's, it doesn't have to be for all, but for some A's, there's gonna be more than one. So the question is, is this a choice function or choice correspondence? And if you remember the lecture videos, we talk about choice functions, not choice correspondences. So when we define condition alpha, we talk about condition alpha for choice functions. However, um, I don't know if it is in Ariel's lecture notes, but uh, we can extend the notion of condition alpha for correspondences as well. But I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to focus on functions. So, therefore, it is good to be sure that this is a function, not a correspondence. It is a function, all right? You can check that. Uh, but question is, I'll come to your uh, question uh, in a minute, so let me first finish this. Um, so, the question is, if this is my choice behavior, how do I show that it satisfies condition alpha? Does... C satisfy condition alpha? Well, good question. Um, well, you take any set A, which is a subset of R square plus. All right, so look at C of A, and let's suppose it's some uh, vector xy, all right, something like this, right? I mean, I know that. 
my, my choice function should give me some vector. So let's call it x, y. It's not a specific number, it's some x and y, I don't know what they are, but I just name them, Adam, all right, or Brad, all right, Jennifer. So this is the name I give that choice for set A. All right, so x, y is just the naming. All right, so the question is, what do I know from this? Well, remember, according to the definition of this choice behavior, x, y is at least as good as u, v for all u, v in u, one of them is u, the other one is v, in my set A, right? Okay, so now consider some set B, which is subset of A, but this x, y is an element of B. Remember the definition of uh, condition alpha? If you choose, this is my A, if you choose this guy from this large set, and if I'd ask you to choose another, I mean, you know, if I'd ask you to choose again in a smaller set B, but this guy is still, so this is C of A guy, uh, this guy is still in this set, well then your choice in set B must be exactly your choice in set A, right? That was the definition and, and that is the definition of condition alpha. So what I'm doing is I am considering just one, all right? Again, randomly, I don't know what B exactly is. All I want B is to be a subset of A and this XY guy, because it's, it is the choice from the set A, is an element of B. So what do I know? Well, I know that if uv is an a, a, I'm sorry, is an b, then uv is an a, right? I mean, if, if you are in this small set, you have to be in this larger set. Okay, well, because uh, xy beats, I mean, at least as good as uv, for all u, v in A, I can say x, y is at least as good as u, v for all u, v in B as well. All right? I don't know if you can follow the logic here. What I'm saying is, look, if this C, A, which is x, y vector, is better than, let's call it better than, at least as good as it's too long, if it is better than everything in this A, it should be better than everything in, in, in B, right? Because B does not have any new elements. Uh, everything in B is already in A. So my, my, my x, y vector is already beating everything in A, and so it should be beating everything in B. So therefore, beating I mean at least as good as sense. So x, y is at least as good as u, v for everything, for every u, v in B. According to the definition, that means my choice in B is exactly equal to the xy vector, which is equal to choice in A. Here, A is arbitrary. I did not fix any specific A. It's any subset of R. And B is arbitrary. So you know what? Uh, my choice behavior, this choice behavior, I'm sorry, therefore satisfies condition alpha. That's it.